Hi, everybody. Thank you for taking the time out of your Saturday afternoon to help celebrate the third anniversary of The Locker Room on this April 1st. I'm Alan Locker. Emmy Award winning writer Nancy Curley and actress Kimberly Sims are here today to help celebrate and look back on the incredible triangle that was Alexandra Spaulding, Roger Thorpe, and Mindy Lewis. Both ladies loved working on this story, and I'm sure I can speak for all of the fans tuning in today. We loved watching it. Before we get started, I just wanted to reflect on the fact that we are here today celebrating three years since I launched The Locker Room. What started out as a small idea has morphed into this incredible community and this platform where I get to speak to people from all walks of life. One of the biggest lessons I've learned over these three years is that if we listen, we can all learn from one another. For more on my third anniversary, I hope you'll go to thelockerroom.com to read my blog post and leave a comment. I want you to know that I don't take a second of this for granted. Thank you for tuning in and letting me come into your home and your living room week after week. And I thought it was time to let you into my home. I hope you like this new background, the home that I share with my very handsome husband, Ray. There are two things I'd like to mention before we get started. I know that many of you have watched my Conversations with Alan series. This series is very near and dear to my heart. As you know, both of my parents were Holocaust survivors and I'm using my voice and platform where my parents no longer can to have conversations about the rise of hate and anti-Semitism. My hope is that together we can stop hate in all its forms. I am moving those particular conversations to a different channel. Um, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to the locker room. The video link is below on YouTube. The second thing I wanted to mention is many of you have asked and I have created a shop on YouTube where you can purchase mugs, sweatshirts, and tote bags. I know many of you uh, didn't want to purchase hats or didn't like wearing hats. Uh, so please consider making a purchase to support the work that I do here in the locker room. I'm sure many of you watching today know that April 1st, 2009 was a very dark day for us soap fans when Guiding Light uh, received their cancellation notice. Let's turn that dark day around today. And without further ado, please help me welcome my friends, Nancy Curley and Kimberly Sims to the locker room to get this party started. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi, Alan. Thank you so much, so much for being here. Thank you for having us and your happy third year anniversary. Wow, congratulations, who knew? Thank, thank you. I, I, it means the world uh, to have you both here and, and to look back on this uh, incredible, incredible story. Um, Kimberly, you shared a story about the first time Roger and Mindy made love. Would you share it with the audience? Yes. So so I was always a little bit shy with the love scenes and um, I was so excited when I got that script and Michael and I were, were just thrilled and I just really committed to it. I, we both said, let's really make this something special. Um, we had the impression it was kind of a one-time thing. They were uh, kind of trying to, Roger was kind of trying to use Mindy was my understanding to get back at Billy and, um, we made a commitment, the scenes were great, they were hot, they were steamy, we had fun doing it, and we kind of thought that was the end of it. And the executive producer at the time, uh, Bob Calhoun, took me into his office and he said, Kimberly, we just watched those scenes. They were, we were, we loved them, they were great. And he said, and Nancy, you'll have to tell me if I got this straight or not, because Pam Long was writing at the time and Bob's impression what the impression he gave me was that Pam was like, no, 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 th th this was just a mistake. Mindy May, we can't continue. This isn't right for the character. And Bob's like, no, 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 we have something here. We have, we have a spark here. We can take this in. There's so many levels we can, there's so many layers we can do, you know, where we can go with yeah. it. And he told me that he really fought for it. And, um, 
and really pushed to, 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 to develop the storyline. And then you came in, my very favorite head writer, and I feel like that was just a turning point for me. Again, the, the scenes after um, she goes back and confronts her father, um, Billy, for the, it just gave me a lot of depth, a lot of my emotion came out. And I think, I think you saw me in a way that I hadn't, what I, what I had underneath all that and just allowed me to fly and flourish in that role. And it was so fun. So thank you. Oh God. Thank you. <laughs> Nancy, can you talk about what you remember the sort of the impetus for the, creating this triangle? Yeah, I I remember the day um, we started talking about this because we were in Pam's kitchen in oh, wow. Connecticut. <laughs> I had this, um, I love the idea of these tentpole characters being Roger and Billy. You know, they'd always kind of had a feud, but I felt like we really had the opportunity to, to set up something really dramatic and really great, which was Mindy in between and Mindy. So the way I remember it was we were always going to tell that story, but I love Bob Calhoun and I don't question his thoughts. about. I wonder if Pam protested. It was my story. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, think, well, you know, because I always thought that was going to be a, a serious line for you. When Kimberly came in, and Kimberly, I love this, because when I saw that you had named Tuesday, Tuesday, I was so touched because it, it just really moved me because I had all, the first time I saw Kimberly, I went, oh my God, we've got Tuesday well. And let's go with, and you know, I just love Tuesday well. And um, you had this great troubled quality that mm -hmm. nobody had tapped into that was really deep. And I loved it. And I just thought, and I thought Kimberly is a different Mindy. This is a, um, and I adored Krista. Mm. Krista was like a, um, to me, a really adorable comedic actress. And when Kimberly came into this, it just was a whole different weight. And the, the stories that were possible were really different. And that's not to take anything away from what Krista does so beautifully, but this was a different character. Well, well, as uh, characters or us as people, you know, age and, you know, mature, right. you become a, you become different. Uh, you know, I'm much different right. than I was in, you know, my teen years. And, you know, so it's, it makes perfect sense. But uh, maybe uh, yeah. because that too, she was not only was she this beautiful comedic actress, she was so talented. She said, yeah. she didn't do anything. Teach her all those things. And my kind of joke was like, all I could do was cry. <laughs> 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 you did I mean, it well. <laughs> playing the piano. I mean, she she's so talented. And um, I could never, I, I just couldn't do all those things. I had, so I, so I, I appreciated the opportunity um, to be able to do what, what I do and, 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 you know, bring my 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 little talent to the to the oh, role. Uh, a, a lot of talent. A lot Nancy, of talent. Before we start watching, Nancy, did uh, I am curious? Did the story play out as you planned it? Did it? Yes, because one of the things that we were thinking about it. I mean, we knew it had legs. We always. Oh did. God, did it? You God know, did it. I mean, just once you kind of get those people positioned on the canvas, it just keeps yielding story. It just keeps yielding, and um, yeah, it did. And and I loved when we brought in. You know, we had a chance to get Vincent back. Yeah. And you know, it's always really hokey how you bring back. You know. A, a dead character. And so of course he couldn't be dead Lou Jack. So he was going to be Lou Jack's um, lost twin. And, um, you know, which is preposterous, but absolutely acceptable as a oh, it, it, worked, it worked quite, quite, quite well. Yeah. Question. Did you know though, at the time that you started writing for Mindy and Roger that, 
that you could get Vincent back, that it could play that far down? No, that was, that came out of left field, but it was so perfect. I mean, it was just a no brainer that it was you and Vince and y'all were so great together. You were really yeah. terrific. I mean, all of those scenes, you know, it, it just, it really focused on a core group of people who I just loved. On one, one of our fans just sent me this today, N Nicole Horton. Thank you for this soap oh. opera that I just cover. Um, incredible. I also, uh, before we get started, wanted to share this. Uh, one of our fans who's watching, Floyd, loved our dear Beverly so much that he commissioned an artist. Oh, to, that's cool. Oh my Great. And the the artist is Joshua Petker. Um, and he got, I believe, Scott McKenzie's permission to do so. How beautiful is that? That's beautiful. wonderful. That's great. Beautiful. Well, I also before we get started, I received a message from a fan of both of ours, Kimberly, my friend Jason Brown, and I'd like to play it right now uh, for you. Thank you. Hey, Alan. Sorry about that video and the sound being gone. I'm sending. I'm going to send this to you as a link so that you can watch it. Um, what I was basically saying is, when I saw that you're celebrating your third anniversary on YouTube with specifically the actress Kimberly Sims and the writer Nancy Curley, I think is her name. I remember um, it's so synchronistic and full circle for me as a former fan of the show. Let me just tell you. So, yeah, my like all of us, my great grandmother, my grandmother, my mom, they all watched Guiding Light for way before I was even born. But specifically for me, I was a gay teenager, you know, kind of awkward, definitely bullied. And um, like I was on the football team getting bullied by bigger guys, you know, and um, I remember coming home from school in, in like the early nineties and guiding light came on at three right after school. And it was like such an escape for me from reality, from the reality I had dealt with all day at school. And it was so nice to just go into Alexandra Spalding, Mindy Lewis, Nick McHenry world. Right. And that was the story that really caught my imagination and my attention and made me start writing. Um, I just loved Kimberly Sims and I can't remember his name, but uh, that Nick, Mindy and Nick, I thought they were so cool. They were like this young professional couple that everyone would want to be friends with. And um, it just really caught my attention and my imagination. And it sort of was my refuge from my life, which was not that pleasant back then. And I thought it's so full circle because it's the same situation now. I mean, during COVID, you came in like a ray of light for all of us and with your channel. And, and it's been the same thing the same escape for so many people, including myself. Granted, I'm not a bullied teen anymore. I'm a 45 year old man, but I needed that escape, you know, from, from all the things going on with COVID and our ever changing world. I needed that escape and you provided it. And it's so cool that you have um, like basically my favorite actress from Guiding Light, my favorite writer. And, and I, I want you to convey to them how much that means to me. You know, we think, I think so often we think that the, the work we do doesn't mean that much, but just think like, the work that they did 30 years ago was so precious to me. I used to look forward to getting home from school, not just to be done with a, a tough day at school, but because I could visit for an hour with, with you know, this fantasy world that, that feels so real and, and, and relate to people and, and, and be, feel like myself. And it was such a great thing. And what you do is such a great thing. And I just am so happy for you. Congratulations on three years. You know, I'm a YouTuber as well. I do something a little different than you, but um, I know how, stressful and what kind of work it takes to be a success on YouTube. And I just want to say, man, you're doing a good job and thank you so much. I hope this, this gets to you. Wow. Isn't that, that's just. That is so moving. Thank you for sharing that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, yeah. What a story. Oh my goodness. I, I'm Alan, you really have brought such a gift and also just uniting all of us. I mean, reconnecting, I had kind of lost touch. And if you don't find people on social media, but you've given this gift to fans, um, but to all of us too, to just kind of yeah. take trips down memory lane. But what I find most remarkable is every time you post or I'm doing some research when I know I'm gonna see you, I, I'm amazed, Nancy, I don't know if you see any of this. I'm amazed by the comments. I'm amazed by the, when you talk about legs and talk the, the yeah. 
The memories, the memories. But that it sustains, yes. that it sustains, that people, when he, when he said 30 years later, is that possible? But so many years later that people still care, they're still interested and in that it's held some place in their heart. And this particular time on the show, I've seen a lot of comments, people talking about um, comparing it to prime time, that it was the, you know a heyday on the show, that it was the best writing they had seen in daytime, which is really all you, Nancy, all you. But um, I nobody, nobody had the cast we did. And nobody had an ensemble of actors. I, that was a joy. It, it really was. It was so much fun because there, you all, I know this is going to sound so, um, I could type a scene and hear it back on television exactly what as I'd heard when I was doing a scene in so many instances with you all. And it was it, I just can't tell you how that feels, you know, to be that in It's what I love about soaps. It's what I love about serial drama. I still think it's the best form. I, I would have loved to have done a primetime soap with this crew of people. Oh. You know, <laughs> and have time to develop real scripts. I mean, because there's always an unevenness to soaps. I mean, you know, we had some in incredible script writers and we had some people who were okay you know so one day it would be like an old playhouse 90 you know it, it would really be like as good as anything you'd see on stage is good and then the next day it might be absurd you know um I mean y'all must have felt that in the studio <laughs> I mean you know um there were always things that were like oh my god mm -hmm. um but I just was so proud of that time and that those people and all of the stuff we put together. Well, you know, there's so much love coming both of your way. Um, let's start watching. Yes. <laughs> and and um, the first two clips are, are cut as a whole. You can talk over them or wait till we're done. I'll pause a little so we can, you know, share. Okay. But uh, here, here we go. Oh, you know, I wish I knew which one was which, but I don't. But well, <laughs> these might be out of order, but okay. these do. <laughs> You're trespassing. Get out of here. Oh, You're an expert on trespassing, aren't you? You parasite. You live off the accomplishments of others. I try not to judge you, Alexandra, and I'll thank you not to judge me. Am I just supposed to step aside and let you have your way? Destroying everything in your path? You think because you're young and pretty you can have anything you want. No, I don't! First Philip, then Roger, and now Nick. You certainly know where to shop for the best. Unfortunately, it always seems to be people who belong to me. No one belongs to you, Alexandra, and don't blame me for people who turn away from you at your own fault. You know nothing of my loss. You've never lost anyone you love because you're incapable of loving. Loving? Is that what you think you do? You control people. You cut Roger off at the knees, making him blame Mother May I, and now you're trying to do the same thing with Nick. You know nothing of my dealings with Nick. Yes, I do. I'm beginning to see how you operate. You try to control and use your name and your influence to get everything you want. It was you. You killed Nick's job in New York, didn't you? Never do anything to hurt Nick or interfere with Then how plans. did you know he'd come back from New York? Oh, we stayed in touch. He, he flew back to Springfield on my plane. But you didn't think it through far enough, did you, Alexandra? Because you killed his job in New York and he came back to Springfield to me. Oh, he's not here for you. The moment he landed, he came back here with me. He wants to be with me and we're going to be together. <laughs> not when he knows the truth. Do you think that will stop him and keep him from me? It won't. I'll see that it does. Why do you want him so badly? Why do you? It's pretty obvious. I love him, and I want to build a life with him. But you tell me something, Alexandra. How do you explain your obsession with Nick? It's perfectly natural. I think he's my son. But he's not! You can't do this, Alexandra, not to Nick, not even to yourself. You want to be with me. 
sick to ask Nick to impersonate your dead son? What are you planning to do? Hire him for the holidays to play the part and, and carve the turkey and sing carols around the Shut tree? Up. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't have any idea what's going on. You don't know what it's like to have a child, do you? So you had a child. Just one. A son. And you loved him. We all loved oh, him. Oh, you we... never loved Lou Jack. He was too much of a man for you. You're right. Lou Jack wasn't the right man for me, but this is a different man, and you can't control his life. And if you think that you're just going to snap your fingers and get Nick to jump, you're in for a big surprise. <laughs> he doesn't know the truth yet. Alexandra, Nick is not Lou Jack. He is a grown man, and he doesn't want a mother. He wants me. And he loves having me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Why should I hurt you in such an obvious way when you deserve a more endless pain? Why does any of us deserve any more pain, Alexandra? I know my affair with Roger hurt you. Aren't you glad to be rid of him? Don't you want to put all this pain behind you and get on with your life? <sighs> oh, I know just where to start. <laughs> and I've known all along. <laughs> Oh my God, that laugh of Alex of Beverly's. There was no one like her. I mean, I know. you had some damn chops. <laughs> I was watching you go toe to toe with Beverly. Oh my God, we had a baby. And you know, he didn't show the beginning of that. Um, There's just a little bit in the beginning um, where um, I can't remember. We were talking about this. I can't remember what happened before. Somehow they must have been, what was it called? The blue moon? Was yeah, that the, the blue yeah. moon? Yeah. He must have somehow seen Nick there or he was must have been talking to Fletcher or somebody. It's va I vaguely remember. And somehow she figured it out. So they had just like made love. And yeah, there, there were scenes with uh, her and Fletcher at the blue moon. Okay, somehow she must have overheard Nick. Somehow she figured out Mm -hmm. They were together, and so she came to the lighthouse, and the scene started where um, Mindy's laying in bed, like after you know she had been with oh, Nick. No, no, here, here, hold on. And she's oh, yeah. come to bed. Nick. Make love to me again. And she loved doing that. She committed to that. That was creepy in a way. Like, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, totally and creepy. Totally and she just committed to that 110%. And we had so much fun. Michael had, Maloney was just commenting uh, before he knew we were going to play it. He was, you know, talking about that scene with, with her touching your hair and all of that. Yeah. Uh, it was so goth. I mean, it was so southern gothic. I mean, that's a real. Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I thought y'all were amazing. Absolutely, Nancy Luther was asking. Given Mindy and Beth's deep friendship and their rivalry for Philip, add to that Beth and Lou Jack's intense love story. 
Did you ever consider Beth, Nick, and Mindy as a triangle? Well, yeah. I mean, it could have gone on forever. I don't think Beth was on at that point. Was she, Kimberly? Was yes, I, Angel in there? Huh? Because I'm trying to, wow, I'm trying to remember how we dealt with that. I, but I remember, well, maybe she left around that time. I can't remember. Yeah. She, yeah, I mean, I know she came, I know she was there at different points. I was trying to think, how in the world would we have done that with Nick and her coming back? But um, anyway, yeah. That's, that's great. Michael Howland said, a common theme that I keep seeing and hearing is how Soaps and the Soap family were a rescue and advocates against the outcasts and those bullied. As one bullied... Myself, thank you all. You've touched my heart. Oh, my um, here we go. Uh, this is November 5th, 1991. <laughs> Amazing. As ever, <laughs> won't you join our table? We're having a big celebration tonight. We'd like you to join us. Oh, I'm afraid not. I'm here to see a friend. I haven't seen Nick McHenry around here tonight. Well, I'm not here to see Nick McHenry. I came to see you. Just that music, doesn't it? Oh, that was great. Great thing. It gives you the feel. It does. I love the slow version of it too. The kind of yeah, Beth wasn't around. She had left before Nick came back. Sure that the mayor's table has the wine all right. We left things rather unresolved the other night. I was hoping we could talk. I so also loved Fletcher and Alex. Please. Please. But when you're talking triangles, I'm kind of busy. I don't Things think you could have. You have every right to be angry. Like Angry? No, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. I'm amazed. I'm bewildered. I just feel free to jump in here anytime because this is going to be a long list. I came here to set things right. Would you please give me a few minutes? Claudia. Yes. Oh, you that's my sister. Care of the whole <laughs> Who is that? Claudia's best sister. I just she got to do the most things. I had the blue moon as a favor to me. That was really fun. I'm sorry, Blake, you were looking for... Uh, yeah, actually, I'm looking for my father. Is he here tonight? Did you check the terrarium with all the other reptiles? <laughs> I remember inviting you into this conversation. You can save your breath. Because if Roger the Dodger shows up, he'll be standing. Because as far as we're concerned, whenever he shows up, we're booked permanently. <laughs> Pretty fed up with me the other night. Frustrated. Excuse me. The mayor's press secretary has asked if I can tear you away. Not with diesel trucks. <laughs> if you can tell the mayor's press secretary, then in case he hasn't noticed, I am now in restaurateur. Mm. And you can look that word up too, all right? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Where were we? I didn't want to leave it like that between us. Why not? You know why. I'm sorry my life is so full of complications these days. It's a permanent condition. It's not likely to change. Look, I just thought maybe there's a chance for us, and maybe there's not. But you were right about one thing. I let myself get too wrapped up in Nick. Alexandra, I know how much you loved your son. But like I said... He's gone. And I'm not. I'm trying to understand. I guess I haven't made it very easy. You know, I've even tried to put myself in your place. Ask me the what if questions like, what if it happened to me? What if something happened in my life like that? What if 
Somebody who, who looked and acted exactly like Maeve walked in my front door. You never really get over it, do you? No. We just try to put one foot in front of the other. It's taking me a long time to get over me. And I have some very good friends who think it has been long enough and it is time for me to push on, and I resent it. So I would never presume to tell you how or how not to grieve for your son. But this is not about Lou Jack. I know that now. Nick dredged up a lot of old feelings, things I thought I'd learned to deal with a long time ago, but... It was a very fragile piece I made with myself. So where does that leave us? I never want to take you for granted, Fletcher. Whether we make it to that desert island or not. Excuse me again, but Ron says Grasso's hasn't delivered today. Well, we were moving tables around, so please tell him to look out on the loading dock. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. This is off duty. Well, it's a crazy business. I'm sorry. Where were we again? I miss you. We should talk this through. Why don't we get out of here? I love him calling her Blondie. Well, I have a, I've scheduled a business meeting with Alan, Michael, and Vanessa at the country club, but it won't take long, and then we can have a nice quiet dinner. Okay, I'm gone. <laughs> that must have been before the last, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. This business won't take long. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're coming in, I think, any second. I'm recording this so I can hold you to it. <laughs> and I have a lovely dinner. Really talk. No interruptions tonight. Oh, she's the head of the table. I'm going to the power room. Sure. Mm. Outer room. It's so quiet in here. Yeah, I feel like I'm in one of those cowboy movies. Oh, I mean, you know, where the deputies ride into town. One of them says, it's quiet. And this is, yeah, too quiet. And back. Oh, I wonder if Daddy got held up. Maybe he's forming a lynch mob just in case. No, but it's going to go now. I know. Besides, your father and I have a lot in common already. Oh, you must have. Would you want to meet us white line? What were you going to say, Kimberly? I'm just putting the timeline together. So this was all before the lighthouse because she's way too calm. So she must, this this all happened before the lighthouse scene, right? Yes, I think that is in between that and when she comes back to the club that night to tell, you, Bill, to tell, right? tell Billy, which, which will play. Too, when they left together or something, she realized what's going on and it outraged her or something. I can't remember. It's interesting the way this progresses because she confronts you in the powder room after this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, this what? must is this a different day than the lighthouse scene? I think it is because when you come back to the lighthouse, you're in a turtleneck. And I just watched those this morning. The yeah, I don't have the I didn't have the dates on those from Edwin. So I don't know. Uh, but this is November 5th, and then the fifteenth is the the whole uh, Alexandra telling uh, Billy and it was the dates on that first scene was the thirteenth. So I think this is another day. Then I think somehow she saw them leave together, or she heard Nick talking to Fletcher. I think that's what sent her to the lighthouse. That's what broke Alex. That's for her was like the last straw. Yeah. So there's some time in between, but this. Yeah. And Michael I, says it must have been fun, Nancy, to write some of those zingers. She, it, it was a blast. I mean, she was so, you know, dead on and dead pan. And yeah, I and, mean, uh, it, she was great. And do you remember if Jay Ed lived a lot? All the time. <laughs> 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 he, at one point, when Pam was there, he had ad-libbed so much, 
she gave him laryngitis. Oh. <laughs> okay. He had to use a pad to write things down. Just, I mean, it, it was that hysterical. Sweet Jay. Here we go. Yeah. Sure. I'll be here alone, undetected. <laughs> I will not let this happen. I will not let this happen. Let go of me. Did you hear me? I don't know what you're talking about. Nick McHenry. Who? Oh, don't be playing the innocent with me. I know what a tramp you are. I'm just listening. I saw you talking to him at the bar. I said, I don't know who you're talking about. I'm warning you. Don't even think about getting involved with him. Stay away from Nick McKenna. what you think of me just do as i say stay away from nick McHenry. what if i say no don't what if i do what if i refuse to let you keep walking all over me considering how i could destroy you i can't imagine why you would want to especially for a man you supposedly don't know just leave me alone don't walk away from me There you are. Something the matter? No, nothing. Nick McHenry's in the bar. Yes, I saw him. Is that going to bother you? No, of course not. I fled you away for Alan Michael and Vanessa at the bar. I, I ran into someone. I never made it to the powder room. All right. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Fletch. Really? Going to say no. As a matter of fact, I wasn't. Oh, <laughs> you're not still angry about Vanessa's taking your client, are you? Well, I haven't forgotten it, Alexandra. I haven't forgotten the attitude with which you addressed me in your office the other day. I don't like being talked to in that tone by a man or a woman. I apologize for being so abrupt. I was a bit thrown by some unexpected business. Look, why don't you join us? Any particular reason? You never know. I might have something interesting to tell you. Actually, I'm meeting Mindy for dinner. Really? As you went to the powder room, I'll tell you you're here. Thanks. I won't be long, Flat. Excuse me, could you take this to someone at the bar? His name is Nick McHenry. Sure. Get me some aspirin, please. Oh. Right here, ma'am. Fresh aspirin. <laughs> but this is... <laughs> sure. Of course. <laughs> Do you still want me? No, thank you. I've changed my mind. Okay. Will you please, please just leave me alone? No. I'm not through with you by a long shot. We have nothing to discuss, Alexander. Oh, yes, we do. I want to make absolutely sure you understand how serious I am about this. Stay away from Nick. Who is this person? How oh, many times did on. she say that you line? You were just batting your eyelashes at him at the bar. <laughs> You mean that dark hair guy? You know perfectly well who he is. <laughs> I didn't even recognize his name when you mentioned it. Then why were you talking to him? I, I wasn't. I was sitting at the bar waiting for my father, and he started talking to me. And you didn't think he looked just a little familiar? He looks exactly like my son, Blue Jack. What a coup to get him in your bed. Oh, come on, Alexandra. First my husband, then Nick, a man who looks like my son. Ah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You may not believe this, but I have no desire to hurt you. Well, you have. What happened between Roger and me was a big mistake. And I am sorry. You have no idea how sorry. One of the fans just said the jewelry is hypnotizing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, you two, Kimberly, together is just you know ace in the hole it is it's just great i mean yeah so you expect me to forgive you i just don't see what good it does to hang on to this anger it's fun <laughs> roger hurt both of us we have that in common don't we we have nothing in common 
Look, I just want to go on with my life. When are you going to let up on me? Never. Well, then you're just going to have to find someone else to torture because I'm leaving Springfield. Oh, this is the best news I've heard in ages. And stay out of my way until you do. Gladly. What unfortunate city is going to get you next? New York. Oh, no, you don't. What? Nick lives there. So do a million other people. No, no. No, I am not taking any chances. Does he mean that much to you? Just stay away from him. How could you possibly know what I'll be doing in New York? I'll have you watched. <laughs> you come within a mile of Nick. I'll know it. You can't be serious. I'm very serious, Mindy. I am only going to New York to further my career. That's it. Good. I'll be watching it closely, along with every move you make. You have no right to interfere in my life like this. I do, and I will. No! That's it. I am sick of your rules and your regulations. I will go anywhere, and I will see anyone I choose. No, you won't. I'm not taking orders from you anymore, Alexandra. My, my. All that time you spent in bed with my husband didn't completely ruin your backbone. I am tired of your insults. You've borne them up to now. Why the sudden change? This private war you've been waging against me has gone on long enough. It's over. Defying me is a dangerous thing to do. I'll take the risk. And all for a man you don't even know. It has nothing to do with him. I am tired of looking over my shoulder. I am tired of walking out of restaurants every time I hear your voice. You know the alternative. Fine. Go ahead, tell my father. I was going to tell him anyway. Well, no sense putting off the inevitable. What are you going to do? Tell Billy! Here, now. What better place than the club? The very place I denounced Roger. It's only fitting I should denounce his mistress here, too. What are you going to say? Oh, where to begin? <laughs> this is your life, Mindy Lewis, and what a sordid little life it's been. My husband's mistress, bearer of his child. People make mistakes. Your history is full of such errors. You tried to take Philip from Beth by getting pregnant. You wouldn't. Oh, I would. No decent man will have anything to do with you once I'm finished with you. Oh, I'm so glad I decided to come out tonight. <laughs> Wait. The glee. <laughs> Please don't tell my father. You just said it didn't matter to you if I did. I was bluffing. <laughs> One too many times, I'm afraid. I am not bluffing. Keep your dirty hands off Nick McHenry. Here, New York, everywhere. Fine. I'm warning you. I said, all right. You won, Alexandra. You always do. Hey, Nick. I was worried about you. Are you all right? Nothing. I heard Alexandra was in there. Did something happen? said something to you, didn't she? Just forget it, All right, Nick. that's it. I'm taking care of no! this for all. Melinda, this has got to stop. It doesn't matter. What did she say to you? She was just her usual nasty self. You all. don't have to put up with this anymore. Just drop it, okay? Don't cause a scene. All right, fine. Look, you don't want me to say anything, I won't. Come on. Your father's waiting for you. No, I can't go back in there right now. Why? Melinda, we've got to tell your father we're leaving for New York tomorrow. We will. Look, everything is going to be fine, all right? Your father and I have been talking. He likes me. I just can't tell him right now. Why not? I just want to go home, okay? I have a headache. Yeah, and its name is Alexandra Spaulding. Well, Linda, come on. You can't just leave town without telling your father. I'll call him. No, uh, that's great. So he gets the impression that I ran off with his daughter? Nick, it. just stop it. I'll handle it. Why don't you tell him? Nothing. Alexandra really got to you, didn't she? Yeah, she has that neck. <laughs> 
Just a little bit. Look, don't worry, all right? By noon tomorrow, we're going to be on a plane to New York, and you will be free of Alexander Spalding for good. I wish. I'm looking out for you now, Melinda. No one is ever going to hurt you again. I promise. What is it? Crazy. Uh, Kimberly had some power issues, but she will be back. Um, Floyd said, God, theater at its best. It, it was great. I, I, I feel like a broken record. I can't think of anything articulate to say. I can't <laughs> think of any new way to say it. it. It's just I watched some of these this morning, and I was just, I was knocked out. I, I can't believe they all did that on a daily basis. It was day after day after day of those scenes. I mean, at full tilt. I mean, it, it they were incredible. And the nice thing was, I remember somebody told me at one point, you know, they actually stopped. Other the actors in the studio would watch the scenes being taped. You know, they would stop what they were doing to come watch their fellow actors do a scene because they were all kind of invested in the whole thing. Yeah, you know, it was nice. Ken, Ken said Beverly's Alex was terrifying even to watch, and I respect any actor who could go toe to toe. And boy, Kimberly goes that's, toe that's, to toe. Without missing a beat. Yeah. She it, was so strong in those. And it just, I'm really proud of her. I mean, she was a baby. Yeah. Fletcher, have you seen my father tonight? No. Here we go. I have Vanessa, yeah. and I've seen Roger slinking around here somewhere, but not your dad. Thank you. How was your dinner with Nick? <laughs> Must be for me. <laughs> Blue moon. <laughs> yeah, hi, it's Nick McHenry. Listen, I've been looking all over the place for Melinda. Have you seen her? She just came in. She's there? Yeah, well, what did she do? Dine and dash? No, she, she was gone before I even came back with the food. Uh, look, um, can you do me a favor? I'm going to be there in a short while. Make sure that she doesn't leave, all right? Okay. All right, I'll see you soon. All right. <laughs> Alexandra. Have you seen Billy Lewis tonight? No. Is there any special reason? Yes, there is. I got a good idea. Let's go to the Blue Moon. I'll show my best girl off. I can be ready in five minutes. Good. I'll make the reservation. <sighs> oh, honey, I almost forgot. You had a call a little while ago. Who was it? Uh, I don't know. The woman didn't leave her name, but I think it was Alexandra Spaulding. No, no way. She wouldn't call this late. Well, honey, maybe you just better call her no, house and forget check. forget it. Alexandra's one lady can wait. This business you have with Billy, does it have anything to do with Mindy? How did you think that? <sighs> Is there trouble between you and Mindy? What are you talking about? Nick said... You saw Nick? Yeah, he was in here earlier picking up some carryout for the two of them. He was asking me if I thought there was a problem between you and Mindy. I said no. I'm beginning to wonder. Mindy and I have a long history, Fletcher. Then Nick is right, there is a problem. I wish you wouldn't concern yourself. I wish you wouldn't say that so often. <laughs> So, okay, Billy, you got it. We'll save you a table right in the middle of the room. Okay, bye-bye. Was that Billy Lewis? Oh, yes, he's coming in for dinner. Is he with a big party tonight? No, he's with his wife, but Minnie's here too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is it, Mindy, and how can I help? Have you seen my father tonight? No. It's bad, Roger, very bad. Alexandra, it... I've never seen her like this. She's going to tell Daddy about us tonight if she gets to him Why first. Did she say that? She didn't have to. It was very clear. No, she, she won't do it, Mindy. 
You didn't see her. Yeah, now she agreed to keep quiet about us. It's one of the things that I insisted on getting in uh, our divorce settlement for your protection. I gave up everything else to her for that promise. It doesn't matter now. She's not thinking. Oh, well, she'll be thinking about her pride. She won't want the world to know that I was in love with you. I'm telling you, Roger, she doesn't care anymore. Oh, she cares. You're young. You're beautiful. She'd be humiliated. Trust me on this. Alex won't say a word. She's all bluff. Best table, and we need it pronto. Yeah, legs. Uh, Claudia told me that mm -hmm. you'd call. Hi, Nadine. Welcome Hi, back. Hi, Fletcher. Thank you. What's the occasion? Well, you look at this, and you need to ask. <laughs> we have some major showing off to do. Uh -huh. here, yeah, well, we have a table right in the middle reserved for you. Good, it. good. Um, so you, you haven't seen Hamp around, have you? Well, earlier, yeah, but he had a date tonight with his daughter, Kat. Any message for him? No, no. He, um... I just wanted to beautiful maid. Check out something for me. Oh, oh honey, look, there's been no uh, and her day. Come on, let's go say no, hello. I, I don't really think it's. Oh, come on. Hi, folks. Well, hello. Uh, hello, Nadine. You're back. Oh, I sure am. And we just thought we'd come over here and say hello. Hi, I'm Nadine. Lewis. Uh, Michael Clark. Uh, and I think we've met earlier. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so he said. Mm. But, Billy, honey, you didn't tell me that Vanessa's fellow was so cute. And he also forgot to tell me his wife was so pretty. <laughs> oh, really? Why not? <laughs> got to talk. Excuse me one second. Excuse me, too. I have to go powder my nose. I got a little bone to pick with you. Yes, sir. You're taking my baby girl away, aren't you? Uh, yeah, well, I hope so. That's if I can find her. Uh, have you seen her at all? Yeah, she's here. Yes, I've heard. So why don't you just round her up, and then you be sure and bring her over to Nadine and my table so that we can say goodbye to you. All right, as soon as I find her, I'll bring her right over. I don't think she's going far. Nick, let me tell you something. I've never seen Mindy act like this about anybody. She hadn't even looked another guy in years. You better be worth it. I'll be good to her, Mr. Lewis. Well, you can call me back. Billy. Yeah, you better be good to her, because if you hurt her, you're a dead man. <laughs> yeah, I've heard Dylan mention something about that. That's my boy. Listen, we're really happy together. When I can find her, Anna I'll says, her fireworks are coming. You spend a lot of time <laughs> looking for her, don't you? That's what you were doing when you came to my office that day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you tell me Mindy was outside with Roger? I'm not a chaperone. And listen, I don't want any trouble in my place. Mindy's a nice girl. Nice? <laughs> You're wrong. I thought you had better instincts. Alexandra, what is it? What's going on with you tonight? Uh, well, listen, I really should probably go find Melinda and... When you find her, you be sure to stop by the table so we can say goodbye. We never did have that party, we promised you. All right, I promise. Good. Just the man I've been looking for. Just the man I've been looking for. I just can't live like this anymore. I walk around in constant fear of that woman. I understand. Alex makes it very difficult on people she wants to hurt. Well, it's got to stop. Tonight, Roger, is there anything you can do to stop her? <laughs> Well, I can try, but I doubt she'll listen to me. Well, just for tonight or a few days until I can get to Daddy first. Listen, if she gets to your father first, I'll deny there was ever anything between us. I don't want you anywhere near my father. I can handle your father. Don't you get it? Daddy would kill you with his bare hands. And I can defend myself. I know that, but I don't want to see my father go to jail. Could you just disappear for a little while until we see what happens? Mm -hmm. I'm not running. I adored you. I'm proud of what we had together. Roger, please. I guess you are uh, ashamed of it now, but I never will be. See, I really loved you. You may have loved somebody once, but I don't think it was me. Better go find your father. It'll sound a lot better coming from you than Alex. I hope so. Why tonight? What? What happened tonight to set her off? That's between me and Alexandra. I'm glad you're here, too. 
Yeah, listen, I tried to call you to thank you for the plane ride, but you had already left home. Yes, apparently you just missed me, but that doesn't matter now. Uh, if you excuse me, uh, my oh, wife's... Oh, you'll want to hear this. So will you. It's about my former husband, Roger Thorpe. And then we found this inn by the river. I think it's near that place in Maine where you said you used to spend summers when you were little. Oh, really? Oh, it's incredibly beautiful. You get up in the morning, you go outside, and, uh... You're kidding. Oh, hey, that ain't the happen, I tell you. Alex and I don't see eye to eye much, but we do see eye to eye on Roger. Tim. The man is evil. He ruins everything he touches. Now, no offense. Oh, none taken. You're right. He ruined our marriage. But you know you're better off without him. I know that now. <laughs> do you know why our marriage ended? Uh -oh. I never figured it was much uh -oh. my business. Roger had a mistress. Yeah, you, you mentioned something about that in New York. It doesn't really surprise me. Kind of surprised me that he could find a girl so stupid as to go for his line, though. <laughs> well, he didn't have to look far. Yeah. Alexander, give a phone call at the bar. It's a wrong number. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah, the man is just pure slime. He, he, he lies to his family. He'd steal from anybody weaker than him. Matter of fact, he almost burned down all of Fifth Street, ruined it. But we couldn't pin it on him. He managed to wiggle out of it. Not this time. You gonna nail Roger? <laughs> To the wall. Oh, we'll see to it. Oh, lady, you are making my day. Well, it's making mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is be good. What's old Roger doing this time? Well, actually, it's what old Roger was doing all last year. Oh, yeah, what's that? <laughs> he was sleeping with your daughter. Oh. Mic drop. Hold on. Fucking <laughs> You think my Mindy slept with Roger? <laughs> Woman, that's plum crazy. Mindy wouldn't touch him with a ten-foot pole. She touched him with considerably more than that. Miss Folding, I think that you should just keep your mouth shut and do this in private. It's true. Regardless, it's not the kind of thing that you should be doing in public. I don't care who knows. It's time people saw that nouveau riche princess for the lying slut she is. You just shut your mouth, Alexander. Look, I'm sorry he hurt you. And I'm sorry that you fool enough to fall for his line in the first place, but that does not give you the right to say these things about my baby. Your baby's learned a few tricks you should know about. You pathetic, bitter old witch. You really are just jealous of anybody that's younger and prettier than you are. But, Mindy, why are you picking on Mindy? Yes, Billy, think about that. Why would I pick on Mindy for no reason? She's got a man. She's got a man right here. She could have any man she wants. She doesn't need your leavings, Alexander. You better apologize before I sue you hard. Oh, oh, please sue me, Billy, so we can drag out all the facts. The rental car receipts, the witnesses at the hotels, all the people who can prove that it's the truth. No, don't. You're lying. How about the hospital records from Mindy's <clears throat> miscarriage? Would that do it for you? Miscarriage? Do you remember the attack Mindy had the day of Nadine's garden party? How did she explain that? It, it, it was a viral thing. <laughs> that viral thing was your grandchild, Roger's child. If you don't believe me, check at the hospital. Ask Ed Bauer. Oh, better yet, there's your lovely princess now. Ask her. Mindy, tell her that she's lying. Nancy, we've got about seven minutes left. Are you okay on time? I'm fine. Nobody's here yet. I've got okay. a family okay, good. coming through soon. The mic drops on this one. Um, one of the fans was asking, do you remember who might have wrote the dialogue for this? I wrote a lot of it in my breakdown because I remember the um, the viral line and the, you know, for me? there were certain things that we kind of really wanted to hear 
in a script. And so we just wrote it out and break it down. So this was one of those, but um, it, 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 Jordan's so good. Did you uh, love working with him, Kimberly? I know he's tough, but I've been just most, but, uh, we had such an amazing connection and um, he, you know, I, I was so fortunate. I get to work with the best people. They, I, I really, I, Kimberly, I, been, you know, I he, look his at sensitivity, his humanity. It was so powerful. And we just, we had an extraordinary connection, but you know, that viral thing was your grandchild was, that's like one of those like dynasty lines that I see like on boards and stuff that people quote all the time people reference that the way she delivered that line and um you remember when she had that virus that viral thing was your grandchild people still talk about that that line i still see it i'm so glad it was a good line i gotta say he um his face all through oh. these scenes from the time he hears and you're so good because it's just this hollowing you know you look hollowed out, and it, it, it and, so and you it, you watch Vanessa. She knows something's about to go down. She stand. This is what's great about an ensemble drama because you see all of these little moving parts and all of these relationships, and what they mean and the depth of them and the network of these people. It, I, it's really good. It, it's just brilliant. And Kimberly, I can't imagine you know, as young as you were, I mean, there you are literally going toe to toe with Michael Zaslow and Beverly. Yeah. And, you know, you know, mo most so press and people in the press, like two of the most consummate Titans. actors, right. iconic in this business. Um, Luther said you deserved an Emmy for your performance. Yeah. She absolutely that, oh my goodness that's so humbling i have to tell you though um michael i said this before when we did the dedication to um to him he loved the storyline when they were um nancy do you remember when they you you wrote the scenes where he bought her a horse and she's pregnant and david lovelace this amazing uh wardrobe designer dressed me yeah. all in white and it was all, he was wearing white. He rode in on a white, white horse. Do either of you remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Horse and, um, oh my gosh, Michael just loved those scenes. Cause it was, he loved being a villain, but he also, that was like, he was a romantic lead for that. Oh, moment. And he loved that. And we committed to that. We committed to all our little hot, steamy sex scenes, romps and his little, and his, when Mindy moved into his apartment, but um, he, he was, you know, you know, when you mention an ensemble, you know, you have these powerful legends and they, they, they made you better and they committed to it. They committed to the scenes, which, you know, it was extraordinary. It was an extraordinary experience. And Jordan, and I had an amazing, I mean, Jordan can make me cry just by looking at it. And me too. Me, you me know, too. I agree. Then, Jordan, it really. Then, then you throw Vincent in the mix and it's just like, oh my gosh, everyone I worked with was amazing. Well, and. You know, us as fans all knew how much his princess met, meant to him. And uh, Soap Love 1974 just said this. Vanessa knew Mindy was always like a daughter to her, mm -hmm. even after she and Billy divorced. Mm -hmm. So all of what is happening has that greater impact to, to the viewer because of Billy's adoration for his princess. Vanessa looks to her like a daughter. And, uh, and then the fact that he he feels so, but Billy feels so betrayed because he realizes Vanessa knew. And oh, so it's yeah. all of those layers. You know, um, Michael said to us one night, we were having dinner in New York with Michael and Susan, Stephen and I were. And he said, you know, you got to remember the villain always believes he's the hero. Mm. And I mm. thought, absolutely. And Michael and I had a really interesting relationship because there was a time where I'd known him for a long time, even before the show. And um, when he had to play some scenes with Hart at one point, there was a point where he was going to, I had him telling, he lying to his son. His son goes to, did you rape Holly? And he said, no. 
And Michael was furious. And so they couldn't get him to come out and do the scene. And I said, well, have him call me. And so we talked and he goes, I would never lie to him. I'd never lie to him. And I said, here's what you need to understand. You love that boy. That's why you feel like that. And Michael Zasley would never lie to him. Hmm. I said, Roger's Achilles heel is that he always sabotages himself. It, it's He breaks his own heart all the time. Hmm. That's why he lies, because he cannot bear to see that son look at him with that kind of betrayal and that sort of, and he goes, okay, I'll do it. You know, and as long as he could understand mm. the motivation and as long as he could understand why something was happening, he'd go with anything. He just couldn't tolerate stupid, you know. Um, he was so glad. I, I'm going to read one more before we finish out the, the episode. PJ Moneybag says, Kimberly's Mindy was one of my favorite characters. I was so sad when she left the role of Mindy. Krista was a favorite. When Kimberly came on as Mindy, she won my heart as my favorite. Wow, thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Here we go. Um, you could see the steam. <laughs> mm. Roger's not in the deck. You have to get him out of here. Hmm. This is what it was all about. Honey, what? Back off, Nadine. Billy, really? why don't you let me speak to her first, all right? You would kill Roger Thorpe. Really? Then you're in luck. He's right outside oh. on the deck. Oh, my God. I forgot that. <laughs> so, what was the blonde all worked up about? Why don't you call it a night? We'll look for Jean tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, first thing. We're gonna get out of here what? now. All hell is breaking mm. loose in there. Come on. I'm not running. No, listen to me. You don't know what's going on. I've got a pretty fair idea. Alexandra's found Billy. And now, suddenly, I'm in mortal danger. Oh, well, I wouldn't be flip about it if I were you, because Alex is telling Billy everything, the whole sordid mess. Well, sordid is in the eye of the beholder. What? How do you think you're going to prettify this, huh? The lies, the miscarriage. You knew what you were doing. You knew you were going to hurt Billy and Alex, and certainly going to hurt Mindy. My feelings for Mindy have nothing to do oh, with Billy. Oh, your feelings... I loved her. You used her. That's all you did. You used her to get back at Billy and Alex. That was a pretty neat trick, huh? Oh, and if she happened to get destroyed in the process, too bad, because you don't think about the consequences of your actions, or or if you do, maybe you just, you just don't give a damn. Oh, I give a damn. But see, like you, my life is my responsibility. Yeah, see, I, I decide what's important to me. And Mindy was important to me. I'm willing to suffer the consequences. Fine. Fine for you. But what about Mindy? I'm sorry she changed her mind. It'll make it harder for her. You're the thing that made it harder for her. <coughs> an excuse for a man. You know, if you really loved her, Maybe you wouldn't so. never have laid a hand on her. You would have spared her this kind of pain. Why couldn't you do that? Why couldn't you be man enough to do that and leave it alone? Why can't you leave it alone? Huh? What are you doing here? Well, I was having dinner here. No, you just jump into this whole mess, huh? Why? I mean, Billy's not your husband anymore. Melinda's not your child. 
Why don't you just do us all a favor and just jump right off the face of the earth? Ah, see, because it's my earth, too, and I'm not going anywhere. If Billy wants to come from me here, that's fine. Let him come. Daddy, no. No, please don't go out there. It's just not worth it. Daddy, please talk to me. <laughs> that lock. Uh. That was the cruelest thing I have ever seen. Roger, <sighs> you've got to leave now. I'm not going I anywhere. I am serious. I have never seen Billy like this. He is going to kill you. This was fun to <laughs> This has been Guiding Light. Uh, fight? Amazing. Do you have the fight? Oh, yeah. play the fight. The fight's so okay. good. Oh, you have to. Right, do you have it? I do. Give me one. Second. So good. They did. Oh, they committed to that. It, it, and it looked totally real. It was really scary. Kind of, and you guys were great. Oh, you and Maeve were insanely good. I mean, that was terrifying. It, I, Maeve is just. Just. You know, uh, I mean, incredible. She's so beautiful. As well. Yeah. I mean. Oh, this might be after. I think, well, I think we pick back up with that. Could you do this to him? You're the one who did it to You have no right trying to play God in our lives. I warned you, Mindy, for months. All you had to do was stay away from me and my family. You're getting what you deserve. My father did You should have this. thought of that before you slept with my husband. If Billy and the whole world see you for the tramp you are, that's your doing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, Billy, let's talk about this. for daddy and his drinking and you could have done anything to me but why did you have to do this to him i asked what line i slept with you what she came to the lighthouse after you left she saw we've been together that's all it took he deserved to know forget her talk to no, me no i have to forget. just tell me how long ago did this affair start was she married to Roger then? Letcher, did you see Roger leave before Daddy tried to go after her? No. I have to help him. Melinda, what? No! <gasps> Melinda! Me too! Let them go! I'm 18. <laughs> I know you're both disappointed, but now you see what kind of woman Mindy is. No! Stop it! Stop it! Story knows one thing you come after me, but you touch my daughter! You touch my baby! Billy, stop! That's not the way Alex made it sound. Minnie and I loved each other. Just shut up! You say Minnie's name never again anymore, you got it? Came for me. You shut up! What it happened? Right. It happened the night you took the tower. So she came to me. She needed somebody to care. You don't get it, do you? I don't care. I don't care because you're a dead man. You got it. You got it. Stop it! Oops. Why did you do this? For you. 
<laughs> what? I did it for you. Yes, it's so good. What are you here. talking about? This is too important to talk about here. Let's go home. Lady, my home is in New York. What are you doing? Let, let's go to my house. Did you go to the lighthouse before you came here? I waited for you. When the driver came back and told me where you'd gone, I knew Mindy had her hooks into you. What business is it of yours who I see? Since when is my life any of your concern? It is now. I heard that she was a control freak, but is this for real? I'm out. My job. The one I lost. Bostrom got a call from somebody very powerful. It was you. You said that you knew somebody who knew Bostra. Nick. Oh, man! You sabotaged my job, and then you have an airplane conveniently waiting for me in New York to bring me back here. Lady, what is going on in your mind? Why are you doing this? Nick, please, I can explain if you'll just come with me. No, I'm not going anywhere until I get some answers. Why are you doing this to me? Because you're my son. Your son? Claudia, Claudia, where is Ham? He's not working. Well, tonight. get him or get the police. Okay. Listen, we need Ham. Come here, huh? quick. What? Billy's killing Roger, I what? swear. Get off me! talking to you, man. She's trying to explain. Well, here it comes. What? Your daughter's trying to talk to you, man. Mm. I don't have a daughter. Would you want to... Wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. Oh it my makes me miss, you know, just watching all of that, how, mm. you know, what a shame we, we cannot see these people i agree I, I really do i love it the um i'm sorry i lost my train of thought go ahead it, it's just something um one of the fans earlier kimberly wrote do you remember your your sort of last time with beverly my last time I, well, I remember when I was leaving the show, I, re I remember being really grateful because I, I remember I got to do scenes with Michael again. I remember just trying to remember when, do you remember my last scenes with her? I remember them, I remember Nick went off and he was on a plane somewhere with Eve and they were trying to figure out, oh, oh, they were getting, oh, they, she was in her wedding dress. Nick didn't show up, that's right. So I got beautiful scenes with Michael beautiful scenes with Jordan. And I, I can't really remember when, does anyone, do you remember? You know, I had to leave at a certain point. I, I left in about, well, no, it was well after that, but Kimberly, I think you were still there when I left. So I'm not sure. I can't remember my last scenes with her. What? Well, well, yeah. I mean, it just, it, that story just, it was the gift that, kept on giving i mean it just kept playing out and then mindy changed the rec the dna records um but i don't remember my I, I don't remember working with beverly like in my last weeks but i remember i got to work with everyone else um but i remember every time i ever worked with her because it was the most fun i had yeah working with all of them jordan yeah. michael beverly it was amazing Vince was so good in that stuff too. He was yeah. really and good. Because there's just there was so much to it. I remember Michael even at the end, like when they paired uh Nick and Mindy up, Michael was like, like jealous. He's like, 
<laughs> he really did like that. He really liked that storyline. But then I think you guys gave him a great storyline with Siona. So he got to have fun with that. That was after I left. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, crazy. What fun looking back at all of that. Thank you for this. That is really great to see those clips. Kimberly, I, I just am knocked out by you. I really, are you working? At, I mean, I saw that you were teaching English, which I'm, is fantastic. Sure, no, I'm not working at all. Uh, you should no. be doing something. Maybe oh we'll goodness. all get together and make a little movie. Oh, that would be so fun. What that, that, oh, do that. you miss it, Kimberly? Um, well, you know, when you show, when we do take this trip down memory lane, <laughs> sir, I mean, yeah. it was an extraordinary time in life. And, um, and just again, Nancy, thank you. I, oh, I, you geez. know, I mean, I liked the character when I came on, but she wasn't quite me. And I feel like you, I loved, I don't remember you ever telling me the Tuesday Weld story because when I was auditioning as a young actress, that's what I heard that they always want to, they want to label you. They want to they want to make a connection, but I must have had some connection because with her because that's the only actress I heard all the time. Really? Oh, she's Tuesday Weld, Young Tuesday Weld, Young Tuesday Weld, all the time. So I don't remember you telling me that you saw that. Yeah, I guess that tortured, you know, mid twenties angst or whatever it is that you have. But you saw something that allowed me to have so much fun and take her. You were so smart too. I mean, and there was a real intelligence in what you were doing. And there was, I was watching those scenes with Alex. The other thing you did in those, which is really complicated thing to bring off, I think you, there are moments she's being, Alex is being terrible. She's being just so vindictive and vicious. Compassion. Yes. You have these moments where you look at her and it's like, oh, I get it. You know, because she's out of her mind. You know, and, and it's like you're That's watching. an understatement. <laughs> yeah, and I think you're watching it and it's like all of a sudden you realize this is coming from bad pain, you know. Right. And you have that, you have those moments which are really moving. And it, it's like a flicker and then you're back in it. But it's such an important thing to know about Mindy that she's got, that she can carry both things in her brain at once that she's being, she's under siege from this woman and yet she feels some kind of sadness for her. That's extraordinary to me that you saw that because um, just on occasion, I remember um, Beverly just tweaking the lines a little bit. If she felt she, there was a time where she felt, you know, she didn't like Alex was such a strong character and they were pushing it far and sometimes she just didn't like when she felt like oh she she would not have turned a blind eye to this she would not have been so naive and so she played with it a little bit sometimes if she she you know she 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 needed to win because Alex was shrewd and she was clever and she felt there was a time where she was playing kind of you know naive to it all and that that she just didn't feel like that was true to her character but also, yes, I did want to play that there was some, even though I believe Mindy completely in, in her youth was in love with Roger at that time. And, but of course she, I wanted to play her with some humanity and compassion and realizing that she was having an adulterous affair and she was, she, you know, even though she convinced herself that their marriage wasn't real Oop. and it was a business relationship, I wanted to, you know, okay. to play humanity and that's i i appreciate that you that you saw that those flickers <laughs> well you know there's something about um it, it <sighs> trying to think how to say this um never mind y'all carry on for a minute no. to, <laughs> I, I, um, I was going go ahead nancy no, no, I don't have a full thought. I was thinking about something a second ago that I wanted to say to Kimberly, and I can't remember oh. exactly, but it had to do with, um... oh, I know what it was. I was just thinking, it's interesting for me to watch this thing as a 65-year-old, as opposed to the 31-year-old I was when I was writing it. Interesting. And 
you know, I've never had those feelings that Alex is going through. And thank God I've never had to deal with adultery. But that whole sense of losing your power, you know, um, of hitting a certain age and thinking, oh, God, I don't have that thing anymore, you know, that you could kind of count on walking in a room. I mean, it, it is, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a weird thing to see. I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm my age now, probably older than Beverly was then, and I know exactly what you're talking about. And as young as I was, I was really sensitive to that. She yeah. was a beautiful woman. Oh, wow. Her whole life, she was a stunning woman. And I... Remember, what was her character on Another World, Alan? Iris. Yeah. Iris. I watched that when I was quite young. Wow. And she was this beautiful young ingenue, and her, and her beauty, you know, was ageless and timeless. But I was also really sensitive to that. I was really sensitive to the fact that she was in a triangle with someone in, in their 20s. And maybe, I don't know, was she in her 40s? I don't even know how old she was. I and she, she was in her 50s, Yeah. As a woman who's aging now, I get that. Yes. I mean, it, it's like, and, it, I mean, go well, ahead. And, and taking power away from not just any woman, she was the Baroness Alexandra yeah. von Hofheim's fall, you know. The queen. She, she was she, the queen. She, really? Yeah. yeah. Taking, she didn't want to be made a fool of, you know. Yeah. She right. And I kind of just, as, as a person and, you know, as a, in my human, I, I kind of respected that, you know, I wanted to stay true to the character and the lines, but I also was really sensitive to that fact. That oh, that was great. But that's a hard thing to do, to get a color like that in a performance and in a scene like that, because otherwise it could be or this terrible railroad kind of transition, but you just let these little flickers happen and then you'd be on with the scene. But it just, it was, it really communicated itself. You could see it and it was good. Thank you. So true. Thank you for writing it. Thank you for writing the best storyline I ever got to play. It was amazing. No, it was so good. Uh, David says, Kimberly and Nancy, you were both iconic. And Jill Laurie Hurst to you, Nancy said, when you, you said movie, she said, yes, in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. It would be oh, amazing. Um, I, I really well, can't thank you. Down here, we should. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, sure. you know, there are still a lot of uh, the GL, you know, cast and fans who, who would eat it up. Well, seriously, let me ask you this, Kimberly, because I do all this stuff for Duke. Um, they're, um, they have a little film class and they're student films and they'll call me to be in something, you know. And would you ever be interested in doing something like that just for a hoot? Just for oh, my fun? God. So sweet. Well, I'm getting my master's in May, but summers oh, are I, I mean, I work like crazy. I work. What are you school. getting your master's in? Um, in, in education in That's English. Great. Awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, we need, I work we with need so great teachers. Amazing yeah. um, students. I work in a, um, it's kind of a remediation program with with a lot of kids that don't have the same, they're high school students. They, they just don't have the same opportunities or, mm -hmm. or um, advantages that many of us do. And they need a lot of extra love. And it's just like been a life-changing, so rewarding, just extraordinary experience. Yeah. Working adults they teach me so much they're they're great kids i really I but alan i don't think i don't know if everyone understood we had all those technical glitches in the beginning and i don't think i properly honored you or thanked you for just everything you've done um for all of us i mean i feel like since we're we're we get to be included in your three-year anniversary we just need to properly thank you for that's for exactly. so many people together and um bringing us back together um, just reminding us of all these things. Your conversations with Alan are so meaningful. Um, you just, I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with the show. I know it's, it's really going to continue blossoming. You, it, I've, I love what every, when I get a chance or just when I know I'm coming back on, I'll go back and watch what you're doing. And it, it's extraordinary. Three years, three years. And then I didn't even realize you were doing something else full time. And getting up at 4.30 in the morning, I just read that. You are so impressive. Thank you. Three 
in at four thirty in the morning. If that I, I, I work out, I work <laughs> out, and then I start doing work for this show before I have to do my full time job. So and it works all weekend on this again. Yeah. Well, so yeah. this, we gotta we gotta branch those two together. Your your full time. <laughs> I know. I know. Really to become. It's just. Well, Really amazing. I appreciate that so much. And the last thing I will share, Nancy, a fan, handsome baller says, thank you, Nancy Curley, for giving us fans one of the best eras of Guiding Light. Thank you. I love that show. I really loved it. And it's the only one I really wanted to work on. I've kind of done, you know, I did some consulting for ABC and mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to write a menopause story for Susan Lucia and they said mm, she's never going through menopause <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great that's great yeah, well, we are lucky you wanted to do and did Guiding Light oh. ladies thank you so so much for doing this on a Saturday thank you thank, thank you, you. And enjoy amazing. the rest of the day thank you so much take care Thank you, everybody, for watching today and joining for uh, this second watch party. More to come. Oakdalian asked me to do an As the World Turns. Hopefully, we'll do that soon. Thank you to Nancy Curley and Kimberly Sims for sharing their insight and memories. And before I forget to mention this, mark your calendars for the weekend of October 7th for the 19th annual Daytime Stars and Strikes in person, in New York City. More details to come. Please join me on Wednesday, April 5th, when Guiding Lights, David Andrew McDonald, yes, Prince Edmund, joins me live. And on Thursday, April 6th, for a Ryan's Hope reunion. Please check out the store on YouTube and help support what I do here. If you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe below. And there is a link to the Conversations with Alan channel. And it really would mean the world to me if you all subscribe to that. And don't forget, you can download audio versions. Just search The Locker Room. Thank you again for these past three years. And thank you for tuning in today. Have a great rest of your weekend. And I will see you on Wednesday.